Keep yourself in the loop of everything football. Listen to Alex and Jeremiah on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Hello there, I'm Jeremiah. I am Alex, always and forever here. Dedicated to college and NFL football. The latest football news on and off the feet. NFL draft trade rumors. We've got you covered from the NFL, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, and everything else in between. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast where we discuss the latest news, rumors, and games of the NFL and college football. From the latest science sisters, breakout stars, and all the news in between, as always, guys, I'm Jeremiah. And as always, guys, I'm not Jeremiah, I'm Alex. I hope I hope you're not me. How are you doing, my I'm, friend? I'm doing good. It's good to hear. How was your weekend? It was, it was, good? Uh, it was pretty good. Good, I'm yeah. glad. Um, you know, if you're a sports fan, it was pretty good, and especially if you're a football fan. It was a exactly. Good we had a really good football weekend. We had arguably our best Saturday and best Sunday in the sport oh. of football all year. <laughs> Best, Not to say, like, we've been lacking is, good weekends. This like, is an understatement. We'll just say that. Yeah, so pretty much we're going to start the show with our NFL week recaps. Like always, we're going to talk college because we're going to recap some scores because for the first time since the song Take On Me, and everybody knows that one, was on top of the charts in 1985. Something happened for the first time since then that has not, obviously, in the time in between. So that's a big deal. Also, we're going to talk a little bit of a new AP just to let you know what it looks like because... You're going to want to know what something looks like heading into tomorrow's college football playoff rankings. And then we're going to preview tonight's Monday Night Football game between the Giants and the visiting Bengals. But let's start with uh, Sunday football. Let's start with uh, some good NFL games. And let's just go through the gamut. Uh, the Titans blow out the Green Bay Packers 47-25. Uh, DeMarco Murray really led the way there for them. I know. Don't you have him on your fantasy team? I do. Murray, I, I do not. Okay. I, 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 know, I know we bond over sometimes having the same person. I, wish I have him. 123 yards score and he's had one score and he throws a touchdown pass and not to mention his uh, receiving yards as well he had a great day Rodgers 371 and two but a lot of it garbage time we move to the vikings again losing after their strong 5-0 start losing to the redskins 26 20 this was a this was a good was a good game you know sam bradford 307 and two not enough though to down the redskins we move to the buccaneers defeating the bears it was just from the get-go the bears were down on this one 36 10 the Buccaneers moved to four and five, and the Bears dropped to two and seven. Jameis Winston three twelve, and two scores. The Chiefs defeat the Panthers twenty to seventeen to move to seven and two on the year. Panthers dropped to three and six. Cam Newton two sixty one and one, but not enough to stop this team scoring seventeen in the fourth. They were up big, seventeen to three at halftime, and the Chiefs came back and just took it from them. The Battle of the Birds, we had a close one. The Eagles taking this one 24 to 15, moving to 5 and 4 in the year, winning one of their first games since their strong start and then just drastic turnaround with a few losses in a row. Falcons still though look like a good team. They're still there in the hunt at 6 and 4. We move to the Rams and the Jets in what was one of the biggest firework games of all 9 to 6. We had <laughs> yeah, this was a low scoring. Yeah, we had three <laughs> field goals from the Rams. And we had a touchdown and a mixed extra point from the Jets. Uh, this was Bryce Petty's first start ever. He didn't play horribly, 163 and 1. Didn't have an interception, though. But they didn't have enough to pull it out, really, when it mattered. Um, this was an ugly game. This was a boring game. Case Keenum, 17 for 30, 165, no touchdowns, no interceptions. He was sacked three times. Moving on. We have the Broncos sneaking away with what was one of the strongest finishes of the first half of games, 25-23. The Saints score late. They go to go up one point, 24-23 on the Broncos. They missed the extra point because, in fact, it was blocked and it was returned for the two points there for the Broncos, and they win this one 25-23. That <laughs> what a crazy when, way to end it. I know. That was a crazy way. And when I saw this game, I was like – Wow, it's going to be hard to top that finish. And I was clearly wrong. <laughs> there's some, there some good finishes. I was clearly wrong about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the next game on the list, and that's the Jacksonville Jaguars losing to the Houston Texans, moving to 2-7, and, and the Texans doing to 6-3. and three. Man, 
Was this a boring game also? Brock Osweiler, 99 yards. Oh, my God. Two touchdowns, yeah, 99 yeah. yards. Yeah. Wow. Mm -mm. Yeah. Leading receiver, DeAndre Hopkins, with 48 yards on five receptions. Next highest was 26 behind him with C.J. Fedora, which is not an amazing day for the uh, Texans. I'm honestly still really questioning the, ca the contract they gave him. Uh, Bortles, another garbage time type day, 265, 2 and 1. 80 yards rushing for them as a team. Chris Ivory was looked at to be the guy when he came in there. 9 for 31. So not looking like the guy that they went and signed to a big free agent deal. One bright spot, Allen Robinson, 9 receptions. 107 yards and a score for him. Alan Hearns, again, struggling. Not the duo they were last year. No. By any means. They're not the same type of offense they were mm -hmm. last year. And then it's understandable. You know, they're having problems at the offense side of the, you know, coaching, whatever it is. It's understandable. I don't think I th Blake Bortles is a bad I think, quarterback. I, think, I don't think he's a bad quarterback either. We've seen it. Remember, he had like, what, more than 30 touchdowns? Yeah, he, played, yeah, he played, like he well. played He played well. I just think. It's the coaching there in Jacksonville. That's the reason why I think this team has hasn't performed. Yeah, that to well be careful. All. I feel like um, also um, if they try to decide to right the ship and get new coaching staffs and coaches and everything, they gotta be careful. They gotta bring in somebody. I was talking to Ben about this. I think the reason that the Browns have been so mediocre for so long is you have this thing where they get these certain players that they want to be the start of the new players. You know, the the, the good. You know. And then they don't play well for about two seasons, and then they get a new coach. And it's a coach with a different philosophy. So those players now become obsolete, and they start all over again. I feel like the Jaguars are starting to build a young team. We talked about it this year, um, heading into this year. And um, I think they need to be careful going and getting somebody that maybe isn't on the same page in terms of the philosophy. So they think they definitely need to. If they, if they do that, they need to address that first. Yeah. And, you know, the thing about the Browns is that, well, you know, the Browns keep browning. But going to the Jacksonville Jaguars here, you know, they just, I feel that coaching has played a big part in their losses and their games this year. I just feel like it has. And don't get me wrong, because this team has talent. This team has a lot of talent. I just feel there's something missing about this team. Something not clicking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm with you on that. We'll have to figure out what it is because they had something, something's not working. Maybe the fact that there's a young team and they're learning to play together, whatever it is, we'll have to see. I mean, this team could be good next year, but they have some work to do. All right, the first of the afternoon games, we have the Dolphins visiting the Chargers and the, them getting this win, as a matter of fact, 5-4 and four there for Miami, and uh, the Chargers drop into 4-6. and six. The big part of this game, though, is, like we've mentioned it before, they have to be the best 4-6 and six team we've ever seen, but they just make mistakes. The Chargers... Philip Rivers, 326 yards, three touchdowns, four interceptions, and two late interceptions. Four interceptions, as a matter of fact, one were all a, late because they were all in six. the fourth. And the last one being the biggest backbreaker as they lose by seven. A pick six. Yes, indeed, Jeremiah, you did get that one right. A pick six from Kiko Alonso for 60 yards. Tony Lippett had two. Byron Maxwell, formerly of the Eagles, as well as Kiko Alonso, as a matter of fact. Both had interceptions but the touchdown yes the pick six for 60 yards mr kiko alonso yeah just a tough loss for the chargers uh and again they moved to uh four and six you know something i see that's interesting yes melvin gordon had a good day 70 yards but you don't see often on box scores only one person att attempted a rush in this entire game and melvin gordon was the only one in real life box scores you know not in madden melvin gordon is the only person that attempted any carries in this game 24 for him for 70 yards yeah. that's it yeah, and I'm not surprised by that at all one bit. And 24 carries for 70 yards, that's tough. That's tough that to is. You know, that's, that's You're grinding out yards because that's 2.9 yards a carry. You know, you he never any, left oh, the field. <laughs> he never, not really. Tyrell Williams, leading receiver there for the uh, for the Chargers. 120, actually, yeah, 125 and 1 for him. So not a bad day. Antonio Gates, again, just padding his Hall of Fame resume. 63 for 1. Uh, leading receiver over there on the Dolphins side, Mr. Devontae Parker with 103 yards. Now a game uh, in the afternoon as well. Steelers Cowboys. This game was tough for me, but it was. If you're a fan of none of these teams, this is a great game to watch. Probably game of the week. Probably, are, some people are saying the game of the year so far. Maybe um, I, it was definitely a classic game. Mm -hmm. I think this is the game where this is when we talk about the 2016 Cowboys team. Uh -huh. I think this is the game. Okay, um, I'm, I'm not, I can't disagree with you guys of right now. And the Cowboys do win this one, 35 to 30. 
uh, moving to eight and one on the year. We've talked about so many times that one tough loss at the beginning of the year. Otherwise, they have been unstoppable and uh, full of wins. And then the uh, Steelers dropped to four and five on the year, struggling, but still very much in the hunt for the uh, AFC North. Big Ben wasn't the issue this week. The offense was not the issue. He threw us for 408 yards, three touchdowns. Antonio Brown, 154 yards and one touchdown. They get their free agent acquisition, their big name free agent guy, in Ladarius screen finally on the field. He gets two or three receptions, I think. Nothing big. They're slowly working him in there. He did have a catch, a big catch late in that game um, in which the Steelers go down and get the go-ahead touchdown with about 40 seconds left, a fake spike a la Dan Marino. But... This defense has been the issue all year, and, uh, of course, they get down the field quick. The Cowboys were aided by a face mask, almost two. It should have been two with one on uh, on Beasley there, on William Gay. And, uh, they, I mean, they were in field goal range from the get-go there, and then they ended up running a touchdown in. And I'll still give the Steelers credit, man. They, they got about half field. They got about halfway down that field with the eight seconds they had. And, I mean, like, the last play was snapped from about yeah, half the field. Yeah, I know what you're saying. You know I didn't I mean? see that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, tough loss for them. Good win for the Cowboys, and uh, they're just moving. They're just rolling. I think we might have to start talking about Ezekiel Elliott as a MVP candidate. I think this is a game. I think because if Ezekiel Elliott is not on this team or Dak Prescott, I don't know how good this Cowboys team was. Because we seen yeah. it last year with the same offensive line, mm-hmm. they didn't win many games. No, no Tony Romo. They no capable quarterback. So exactly. there you go. There you go. And not only that, they had like what three different guys at running back position. Darren McFadden was making starts at one point. Mm-hmm. And Dunbar. Dunbar. A and couple, I forget the other. And one. then uh, I forgot the other one too. But mm-hmm. he uh, okay. Randall. Yeah, there you yeah, go. yeah, yeah, yeah. He Randall. started. He started off the year. They had three running backs last year, and no quarterback. Take a year. Fast forward to. Right now. And just two draft picks did that for two you. Two draft picks. Relatively. Relatively. They're on fire. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, I we're going to have to start talking about the Ziggy L as an MVP candidate. Yeah, over 200 yards from He's, scrimmage yeah, exactly, on yeah. fire. If you look at the arguably the, the milestone for rookie rushers in the NFL, right? You have Eric Dickerson back in the day with I think he had about – Eric Dickerson had 1,096 yards through, I forget how many games, I think through this point of the year. Peterson had 1,081. And then yesterday, Ezekiel just went over 1,000 yards. Total rushing. So, yeah. He's having a pretty good year. What, like seven games left? Um, Roughly. Yeah. Something along those lines. Yeah, I'd have to look for specifically. But yeah, some, I mean, it's going into week 10 now. So, 17, yeah, six games. Actually, no, they already had their bye week, so yeah. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how he, yeah, definitely how he, how he lands. And then the last of the afternoon games, we had the Cardinals winning late to go ahead of field goal to defeat the 49ers. 23-20 on the back of Carson Palmer's 376 yards passing. Larry Fitzgerald just defying father time yet again, 133 yards on some very awesome catches. And then speaking of awesome catches, how about five for 101 for Michael Floyd, who had some pretty sweet catches Yeah, also. finally got involved in this Arizona Cardinals offense. He's been missing yeah. for a while. And then David and, Johnson, another good performance from him. Yeah, also. and uh, I was watching this game, and I was like, why am I so nervous about watching a 49ers game? I What is this feeling? I had because I've never. Oh, you've never been in a game, was, in the game uh, all year. I was like, nervous. I was like, what is this feeling? Like, yeah. are the Niners like in the game? <laughs> the defense kept them in the game. I was really surprised yeah, by that. They did at times. And, Colin uh, Kaepernick played okay, two ten and one. And it was probably yards. his second best game of the year up to last me. week. Yeah. yeah, still not great. You know, so not not nothing to. He played so well still enough. Still not something to really put your hat on, but played well he, enough to he, win. He played well enough to win. And you got to give the credit to this Niners team. I think they're starting to slowly, you know, come together. Um, they're starting to finally learn uh, the Chip Kelly offense. They, mm-hmm. I think Chip Kelly finally knows his team. Well, you know what they say, week 10 or bust, you know. <laughs> you better learn it by then. <laughs> All right, and the final game of the day, and it's actually a Sunday night game, the Seahawks-Patriots. Russell Wilson, 348 yards, three scores, all to Doug Baldwin on this one. But Garrett Blunt, 69 yards. Oh, bad day. How about three scores for him? How about the only Mar- uh, the only Bennett playing in this game because Michael was injured? Martellus, the leading receiver there for the, not, oh, not a Gronkowski, but Mon- Mar- uh, Martellus Bennett. <clears throat> Excuse me, 102 yards for him. <clears throat> 
excuse me, Tom Brady fails to throw a touchdown for the first time this season in the game he started, and he throws his first interception of the year also. Uh, 81 yards as a team on the ground. The rushing was not their problem. The problem was the defense late in the game, but this was a good finish. And Doug Baldwin scored three touchdowns, and he was on my bench. He was so oh, deep. sorry. He was so scored three touchdowns on my bench. Yeah, he did. I mean, there you go. He did. There you go, man. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but this is a tight game. Um, you know, very well could be a Super Bowl preview. It's I think it, a, it was definitely I think a rematch. It might. I think it might be. You know, we have um, – the Seahawks have to go through a certain Cowboy team. Apparently, it's playing lights out, so we'll have to go from there. But, yeah, it was an impressive game. Seahawks and moved to 6-2-1, and, and the Patriots fall to 7-2. and two. I want to say this. The Oakland Raiders are now tied for the top seed in the AOC. Yes, they are with yeah. the Patriots. It's crazy. And it's crazy. you know what? We're I never gonna, thought I would say that. Yeah, Right? Uh, we're actually going to take our first break now. We're going to get into even crazier because we're going to about to talk some uh, college football here in just a minute. So we're going to preview the Monday night game uh, at, after our last break. That is uh, Giants and Bengals, like I said. And then for those fans who are missing football, don't worry. Bills fans, Lions fans, Colts fans, and Raider fans, you guys will all be back this weekend. So let's take that last, first break, as a matter of fact, and we will come back and we're going to talk college football in just a moment here. At the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And we're back here at the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. It's time to talk college football. So we're going to start with the scores of the weekend. Uh, and I'm going to skip some some notable ones because I'm going to come back to them to talk oh, about them specifically. We'll, we'll talk about them already. Oh, we're going to talk about them. So let's start with Friday because you guys had a show, but you didn't. You were obviously gone before that one. Florida State defeats Boston College pretty handedly there for the 18th team in the in the uh, in the in the in the nation. It's 47. 45 to 7, excuse me. But let's move to the Saturday games. This is the important part. Alabama does Alabama things, wins 51 to 3. They move to 10 and 0 on the year. Just can just Mississippi State couldn't couldn't hang with them. 51 to 3. Just more Alabama. Now we're going to skip. We're going to skip 2, 3 and 4. We're going to move to 5. Ohio State 62 to 3 over Maryland for the number 5 team in the nation. That's an impressive win for them. 62 for the second straight week. That's a lot of points in two games. Louisville, number six, defeats Wake Forest, 44-12, to an impressive win for them, as well as Wisconsin with an impressive win at number seven, winning 48-3 to over Illinois. Now is where it gets tricky. Number eight, Texas A&M loses for the second straight week, 29-28 to Ole Miss. Ole Miss without their starting quarterback, Shea Patterson, leads the way for them, 3-38-2. Pretty impressive for them def uh, defeating Texas A&M there. Now we move to number nine and they lose georgia defeats auburn 13 to 7 georgia playing well you know they were ranked at one point dropped out but they're, they're getting their their big wins this year penn state a team that has had quite a few back-to-back -to, -back to you know some some frequent big wins for them they win another game at the 10 spot 45 to 31 over indiana impressive day for them from their starting quarterback trace mcsorley 332 and two for him Impressive running back day for Indiana, and 108 and two from their running back Devine Redding. Impressive day there, but it was not enough to hang with the 14-point loss to Penn State. Number 11, Oklahoma defeats Baylor, 45-24. Baker Mayfield, 20 for 25, 302. The running game just as, as successful from Joe Mixon, 124 and one on 14 carries. Moving on, Colorado, the second highest ranked Pac-12 team in the AP poll and the playoff poll. They win this one, 49-24 over fellow Pac-12 opponent, Arizona. Ranked 12th. We'll see if they go up any higher this weekend. There's, there's sure to be some shifting. Will. I think they will. There's do. sure to be some shifting. 
Oh, yeah. Texas definitely. Tech loses a very close one to Oklahoma State, who is ranked 13 at the time, 45-44. to 44. Mason Rudolph, 395-2 and two there for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Just a good old-fashioned Big 12 offensive game. Mm-hmm. 395 from the quarterback, 126 from the running back, 158 from the leading receiver, all for the Cowboys there. Big day for the offense. Moving on, Virginia Tech, the 14th team in the nation, loses to Georgia Tech in the Battle of the Techs, 30-20. to Virginia Tech's quarterback, Jared Evans, 316-1, but that's not enough to counter the 143-1 from Marcus Marshall, the running back for Georgia Tech. They win this one by 10. West Virginia, the 16th spot, continues to win. They win 24-20 over Texas, a game closer than a lot of people thought. Texas led by Shane Bushel, uh, 318 and one for him, as a matter of fact. So don't know, and it's, it's, it's a tough game also if you look at tougher running back that gets 167 yards and no scores, right, for Texas. But <laughs> Those Deontay are some Foreman, tough yards. 35 <laughs> yards, man. There are 35 carries for 167 yards. Like, come on. Yeah. Come on, son. All right, moving to the 19th team in the nation. That's Nebraska facing Minnesota. They win this one 24-17 behind their quarterback, Tommy Armstrong, 217-2 and 85 yards from the running back, Terrell Newby. Moving on to Boise State, the highest and only ranked team in the Mountain West as it stands. They win a big, big game, big win for them, moving to 9-1 in the year and 5-1 and in the Mountain West, 52-16 to over Hawaii. Again, just struggling, just struggling Hawaii team for the last few years. Brett Rippon, 338-4 and four there at the quarterback position. 16 carries, 153 and 2 from Jeremy McNichols, and 141 yards receiving and touchdown from Cedric Wilson, the leading receiver for Boise State there in the Broncos. And then the last two games of the day, Washington State wins a nice one, 56 21 over Cal. David Webb, not a bad day, 425 and 3 for him. Again, for the first time in years, this running game for the Cougars has actually been lethal. 128 yards and a score from Gerard Wicks. Impressive day. One thing to hang their heads on, though, is they do lose River Craycraft for the rest of the year with a torn ACL. That is disappointing. He is a kind of go to. He's a go to guy. You know, he hasn't been huge in a lot of games, but then yesterday, you know, or Saturday, he had two touchdowns before getting injured. So sometimes when he's on, he's he's definitely one of the best. So that's that's down for them for a team that's absolutely as of right now in first place in the Pac-12 um, North, and they are absolutely playing for the Pac-12 championship right now. And then the final game of the day was a 24 versus 25 matchup. LSU defeats Arkansas 38 to 10, behind 215, 252 yards, excuse me, and two touchdowns from LSU running back Darius Geis, 252 and two. Holy cow, Jeremiah! And okay, let's get let's cut to the chase. Let's get down to the needy. gritty. Uh, basically, the biggest storylines here that we didn't talk about yet. We're talking about, of course, two. Three and the four teams. Mm -hmm. The first time since 1985 that the two, the three, and the four lost. Not to mention the two, the three, the four, the eight, the ten, and the fourteen. Exactly. All lose in this one. And I kind of, uh, I kind of expected Washington to get upset. In a way, um, you know, you've been. Yeah, I've been I, I gave you credit it. on the sports show. You I've been, called it. I've been, I've been talking about it. You know, I've been saying, you know, USC. Maybe Washington State could upset Washington. Um, I did pick Washington on Friday because if this game was at the Coliseum, I would have hands down picked USC. You went against it. You were went, so sure. I, I went against it because I really thought Washington was a good enough team uh, to take that pressure and you know to gain momentum into the playoff standings. Very nope. True. <laughs> did not happen. No, nope. <laughs> but I did kind of expect the USC to be one of those teams that upset Washington. Yes, and you did. For sure, there's no way I can see Washington getting back to the playoffs now. There's it's gonna no be way. tough, man. There's it's no way. Really I really do think they had to finish the season undefeated. It's not gonna happen. But man, give yeah, credit USC. Yeah, they they are a completely different team than we than we saw in the first uh, yeah, four games. Six straight for them. They are they they are. I kind of thought they were playing for next year. No, they're still playing for this yeah, year. Still, and they have yeah. a very good shot at the Pac-12 championship as well. Exactly, now. they do. Uh, with this win, they have a, a legitimate shot. Mm -hmm. So we talked four and four lost. Now let's move to three. And three loses. Michigan loses to Iowa 14-13 to on the road. Man, this was not what, when you want it to happen. <laughs> this was a good game too. Uh, this you know, was with late field goal to win the game. Late field goal, cr crowd rushing the field. Mm -hmm. This game had everything, and this game did. 
I got to say, wow. <laughs> yeah. Now, you talk about crowds rushing the field. How about Pittsburgh almost filling their entire – or excuse me, Iowa almost filling their entire field up. How about Pittsburgh? If they were home, would have done the exact same thing. Oh, they would have. Because they beat Clemson with a field goal as time expired to win this one 43-42. to Deshaun Watson, 580 yards and three scores. Still could not win. Still couldn't win. He threw the ball 70 times. Wow. That's – that's Connor Halliday, Washington State, circa 2013 numbers, where he threw he threw the ball 72 yard, you know, 72 times in one game. Like man, 202 yards receiving from the leading receiver Mike Williams. James Connor put on a show, 132 and one for him. Just another strong performance and a strong year from him. This is probably game of the week, honestly, by far. This one, Michigan, Iowa was a big one. Obviously, all three of these upsets were big games, I would say. Um, but probably the three, yeah. This one was, this one was lights out. I mean, again. I think Game this one for both okay. of these. I think which one's more shocking? Because I'm not really shocked that USC beat. No, I'm not, I'm not shocked I'm not, either. But I am shocked that Iowa beat Michigan. I had the nasty that one coming. I am shocked that Pittsburgh. Beat I'm more Clemson. shocked that Iowa beat Michigan than Pittsburgh beating Clemson. I don't know why. Just like I'm like Iowa beat Michigan. <laughs> you know, that maybe just a little bit like that. I've always enjoyed I, I watching know, I, Iowa I think too. I, I think I uh, am more surprised by Iowa just mm-hmm. because of the the year they're having. Yeah, I always like watching Iowa too because you've seen you know you know what they look like. They look like the Steelers. So I, I, the first time I ever saw them, I was like, "What is this?" You know, the first time I ever saw Iowa's uniform. So I always like to see the baby Steelers do well. You okay, know? so getting, well, a, getting a huge upset <laughs> in the Big Ten there. And uh, so we're going to completely have. A different. The only thing you and I can tell you, three, four, say it for teams. sure, is Alabama's one. Al- Alabama's one. I don't know what we're going to see here. We're going to try to preview it tomorrow and predict it the best we can. Now, keep in mind, you and I have been, I've been absolutely right, and you've been right, and then the second time you were wrong by switcheroo. You said to, to flip flop. I think I, think I kind of know where we're heading here. I'm going to say the best I can really guess here is I want to say Bama won. Ohio State two, and then from there, I don't, I don't know. Some okay, people think some this. people think Michigan might only drop as far as three. I'll say this: I've seen Michigan dropping as far as six with Louisville in three. I, I don't know, man. I, I, gonna, I, all I can say is Bama, Ohio State. I'm gonna go Bama, Ohio State, Louisville, and Michigan. Okay, so following what the AP looks like now. Yeah, uh, there's bit. no there's no other way that we can go about it. There's, I can't put Wisconsin in there. Uh, Clemson. It's tough for me to put Louisville. How about on there. this? It's tough for me to put Louisville in there because of that Clemson loss. Yeah, and now Clemson's behind them. Yeah. How about this? Alabama, Ohio State, Western Michigan. Oh my gosh, really? And Utah. Oh god. <laughs> hey, Western Michigan. They're one of two undefeated teams in the yeah, nation. Yeah, ten and zero as it stands, and Alabama ten and zero. So. What's the similarities between Alabama and Western Michigan? How about no losses? That's that's the only. Yeah, that's, that's the only that's, thing. That's that it ends. It starts and ends there. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, let's take our last break. We're gonna come back. We're gonna preview tonight's Monday night football game, and we're gonna get out of here because tomorrow we have a big day. We have to start preparing for. So let's do that, and we'll be right back here at the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. And we're back here at the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. That commercial right there. Don't forget to listen to that show. That is our fantasy football show headed by one and only Jeremiah right here. Of course, yeah. All right, let's preview tonight's Monday Night Football game. It's between the New York Giants and the visiting Cincinnati Bengals. The Giants sitting at 5-3 and three on the year. Not too bad. The Bengals 3-4-1, and four and one, struggling a little bit more. They are currently third in a down AFC North this year. And no matter how well New York is playing, they are obviously in second place behind the team that beat a AFC North team this weekend, and that is the Dallas Cowboys, who is just having a year to remember. Now, as it stands in the last five games... 
We have three straight wins from the Giants. After two straight losses early in October, they have beaten Baltimore, L.A., and Philadelphia three straight weeks. Now we look at the Bengals, and the Bengals are coming off their last game a tie, as a matter of fact, with this bye week. They have not been too pretty. They have lost two, they have won two, and they have a tie in their last five games. So they have some work to do to really get back on track. As of right now, they are scoring about 20 points a game, averaging about just short of 300 yards passing and just just over 100 rushing. In reality now, the I think the, the Giants have a little bit more work to do. They are averaging 280 yards passing but 68 yards rushing as it stands. Not good. Ray Maluga out of this one. Big defensive part of the Bengals linebacking core there. And Justin Pugh, the starting guard, left guard for the Giants, is out. Everybody else questionable. Michael Johnson, D-end, uh, receiver James Wright for the Bengals. And then a couple of defensive players, Andrew Adams, Jonathan Casillas. People remember him from the Saints. A few different teams there. And Kerry Wynn, D-end, they're all questionable. As long as Victor Cruz, yeah. as well as Victor Cruz, excuse me. Um, obviously, it's Dalton versus Manning. It's Jeremy Hill versus whoever's running the ball for the Giants. <laughs> Whoever it and is. Then, anybody. Exactly. And then the marquee re- uh, matchup probably of the uh, two teams facing each other, and that is two of the best receivers in the game, A.J. Green and Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah. Uh, definitely top five uh, receivers in the game today. I think I'm going to have to go with Cincinnati yeah. in this game. Uh, you know, New York Giants sometimes – they have a, a quarterback that does Eli Manning things. <laughs> and it just so happens that's actually his name. Exactly. It's just, he just happens to play for the Giants. And the Giants just can't run the ball. They can't do it. No matter if they have a four-man, three-man, two-man, or like a workhorse. They can't run the ball at all, <laughs> Alex. They can't do it. They're like... They, when they hand it up to a running back, they're like, oh, what do you want me to do with it? Go forward? No, nope, go backward. <laughs> what do you want me to do with this ball? What do you want me to do I, with this? Am I supposed do to I, run do, with do this? I, am I supposed to go forward? Nope. There you go. Go backward. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be I like, for real. I like that. I'll be for real. They don't know how to run like the ball. <laughs> well, you know what? I think I'm going to give the Giants this one. Okay. I think I'm going to give the Giants this one. Um, I, yeah, I I'm, going with the, I'm going with the Bengals because I still think they're all very much alive in the AFC North. Yeah, I mean, with the way that AFC North is just down this year. I, I, mean, I, I mean, it's yeah. weird because a, the AFC North is down this year, but I guarantee whatever team gets in the playoffs from there, the teams aren't going to want to face them because there's yeah. still those kind of teams that are good. But, yeah, they're just down this year. Um, and they're I, still there. And Giants, they are a good team. I just feel like it's going to be hard for the Giants – to win the NFC East, I don't think they're going to win it. It's going to be hard for them to make the playoffs too because that division yeah. is so tough now. I'm going to have to go with the Bengals on this one. I just think they need a win to go back to 400. I'm um, 400. 500. <laughs> that's a tough, that's Four, a tough average to get. Uh, 500. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I, I, I'll give it to the, the Giants just to – just to get some difference okay. between so the two of us. Okay, okay. A little opposition there. Okay, I like it. All yeah, right. Just, well, just to get a little opposition All right. There. Okay, okay. And, of course, tomorrow we will recap this game and see who was right in the guess. But until then, we're going to get going. It's a good episode, man. I enjoy it. Every episode is good. I enjoy every episode. good when yeah. I'm hanging with you, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, as always, we'll be back tomorrow to talk tonight's game. We will recap that. We will do the best preview we can in terms of prediction of what that playoff ranking might look like. And any and all news that may come in between the time here and now in our 24-hour break. But until then, it's time to get going. Uh, as always, I'd like to thank you for listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Network and the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. For Anthony, I'm Alex. And I'm Jeremiah. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. You guys enjoy football, and we will talk to you then. Have a good one. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. 
Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.